Hi, I'm Lise Colucci. I'm one of the life coaches at Queen Being. I am here to offer you support as you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. Today, I wanted to talk to you very briefly about what happens when a survivor has a conflict with someone after the abuse who is not a narcissist. So they just have a regular conflict with someone in their life and they display fleas. Within that argument, discussion, debate, has narcissistic fleas. How it can affect your relationship with other people and how it can be improved. So this morning I was thinking a lot about how once a survivor has begun their healing and they get back into life, they get their feet on the ground, they've got some awareness of themselves and their boundaries are starting to form again and they're starting to place firm boundaries in their life. How if there's an argument or a debate that comes up, the person often has trouble seeing that they are not being attacked and feeling like the other person disagreeing with them is somehow a trigger or like the other person is being manipulative somehow or stepping on their boundaries when in fact the other person may just be trying to have an argument debate discussion in a healthy way i was considering how that affects people and what that might is like for both sides so a lot of times after narcissistic abuse, a survivor has to learn how to engage in controversy, or maybe they never learned how to do this to begin with in their life, and so they have to learn it for the first time. But they have to learn how to engage in a confrontational situation sometimes in a way that is fair, effective, and where both parties are being heard. The argument can trigger an automatic response that then sets into play the dynamic that they experienced with the narcissist. So if they were used to being gaslighted and they have any hint that someone isn't agreeing with them, they may feel gaslighted. And they may attack after that and either shut the person down, um, talk through them, interrupt them, not let them be heard. Basically, they shut their ears off to the situation because they have a fear of being gaslighted or they have a firm stance that they will never let that happen again. When in fact, the other person was simply trying to state their own point of view, or they have a very differing point of view, and, and it can be difficult to hear. And so, so basically what happens is the person who is in discussion with the survivor then becomes a victim to narcissistic fleas because the survivor then uses the same arguing strategies that they used within the narcissistic relationship or in fact they have picked up traits from the narcissist and they start throwing them into the debate with this other person. Getting healthy conflict resolution is a really important piece of your healing from narcissistic abuse. There are many situations in life where no one's right and no one's wrong where it's simply two differing viewpoints and there is no resolution and that can be especially triggering because it can feel a lot like the lack of closure or like not being heard. So it can be important to learn how to listen to the other person and watch for signs that that person is listening to you to know whether or not you're entering into a healthy debate or a health, healthy discussion or even a healthy argument. The truth is both sides don't have to ever come to an agreement, nor do they ever have to find resolution. Being heard is what matters and having your opinion validated through healthy discussion matters more than who's right and wrong in a lot of situations. As we learn to communicate in a healthy way after narcissistic abuse during difficult discussions, it can sometimes take stepping way back from the situation and looking at it as a bigger picture. It doesn't mean you have to change your stance or let go of what you believe. It just means that to step back enough to hear the other person and to validate them through your listening and expect the same from them. If we're in constant reaction to our triggers and we're in constant reaction to thinking someone is a narcissist or attacking us every time they disagree, then we never have real conversation and we don't have a chance to respond to another person. We don't even have a chance to respond to ourselves because we're not actually talking about what we're thinking and feeling at that point. We're talking about what we're reacting to, if that makes sense. We're not we're not, we've lost sight of the 
topic itself and we've gone into reaction. And once you're in reaction, it's really difficult to see logic and to see reason and to even know what it was you were talking about in the first place. Maybe you hang on to one part of the topic so hard that you miss all the other pieces around it. So stepping back and realizing you're in a triggered situation and learning how to communicate openly by listening and responding rather than reacting can really help to smooth your way through this so that you have healthier relationships in your future. I mean, basically when we are reacting to a trigger of any kind, we're not responding to the other person in front of us. We're responding to the trigger. We're actually, we're reacting to the trigger. We are, we've lost sight of the other person. We've lost sight of the issue itself. All we are is in reaction to a trigger. And that's no way to go on with life and to bring that into your relationships. Taking a look at yourself in those situations and seeing where you're reacting, where you are responding, where you're truly listening and where you've shut down and become closed-minded to the situation and single-focused. Those, those are all ways to begin working with it so that you can have some self-awareness around it and you can begin to expand your repertoire of how you behave and how you treat people and how you treat yourself when you're in a debate or an argument with someone. I know this can be a really tricky place because it can feel like you've set a boundary and that that boundary is everything and you're not going to let anyone cross it. And sometimes it can take leaving the boundary there and listening, even though you know you're not going to cross that boundary, just listening to what the other person says to, to sort of free up space in your head to see where that boundary fits in the situation. Sometimes we lay a boundary down so hard because we're used to them being stepped on that we forget to apply it correctly to the situation. Sometimes it can mean compromise. Having a boundary set does not mean that compromise is out the window. What it means is that compromise has to be mutual and that it has to be agreed upon that that boundary shift. I guess the main point of this is learning to respond rather than react. And how we do that can, can include things like I said, which was self-awareness, understanding when we are in reaction and when we are actually responding and understanding what the difference is between reaction and response. If you are reacting to something you think is going to happen because it happened before, you're most likely in reaction. If you are listening to the situation as it's presented in front of you and then weighing in what happened in the past as part of the equation, but also weighing in who it is you're speaking to, the integrity of the person you're speaking to, the situation as a whole, then you're more likely responding. So as we learn to have self-awareness around this, it can ease arguments down to debate and perhaps down to discussion. Once we are triggered and we are in reaction, nothing is left but to hold that stance as a survivor because we're not going to let people step all over us again. So it's softening that stance at the same time as holding your own integrity. You know, it's a tricky, interesting place to look at yourself and to look at a situation and realize that you don't need these fleas in order to debate or discuss or even argue, but that you can do so in a healthy, interactive manner with another person. And now all of this is if you're dealing with a healthy, sane, sound, kind human being with empathy intact. I'm not talking about dealing with narcissists. I'm talking about going beyond that. You're not dealing with those people anymore. You're in your everyday life and something comes up with a friend or a coworker or anything really, but <clears throat> people that you generally trust in your life, or at least trust on a level of them being consistently who they are and not being a manipulative person. So I hope that brings some understanding and I hope that helps a little bit if you are coping with this in your life and struggling with the effects of this particular flea and know that you can do this. Know that a lot of it comes down to trusting self again and trusting that you're going to be okay even if you have to debate something. I mean, this, these triggers are strong and they are programmed into you from the gaslighting and the projecting and the manipulating and the word salads and all of the tactics and narcissists will use when they argue. And I would think that any one of us would not wish to have that in our life and in our discussions and debates and arguments with other people. So I hope that gives you something to think about. Let me know what you think. Has this affected you? 
Do you have other ways of dealing with it? What are your solutions? That's it for today. Hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.